All right, so I'm going to start by defining a, 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 a building. Um, and each group, each profession, defines buildings differently. And the definition I'm going to use is from a building science or building physics perspective. It's not the only way of looking at things, but it's a way that helps building science become building science. Um, so a building from a building science perspective is an environmental separator. It keeps the outside out and the inside in. And right off the bat, that puts us in conflict with architects who are always trying to connect the inside to the outside and the outside to the inside. So I'm not saying that the architects are incorrect. I'm just saying that our perspective from building science is slightly different. <coughs> Some, sometimes the outside sucks and you don't want it inside. And sometimes the inside sucks and you don't want what's inside to get into the thing that separates the inside from the outside. Everybody with me on, on that? So what are the odds that that thing that separates the inside from the outside is done perfectly? Well, you know, slim to none and slim has just left town. So sometimes the inside gets into the thing that separates the inside from the outside and we have to decide whether we let it all the way out or we kick it back. Make sense? Sometimes the outside gets into the thing that separates the inside from the outside. We have to decide whether to kick it back or let it through. And how much we let through and kick back in each direction depends on four things, in my opinion. See, uh, people don't want to admit that it's an opinion thing as opposed to, well, we have consensus and everybody's agreed and the science is settled. Well, let me tell you a little about science. Science is never settled and science is never proven. You can only disprove science, not prove science. And that's a misunderstanding. Those people that say that you can prove something, well, they're clearly arts graduates. They, they don't, they're not, they're not, not, not from the science and technical side. Anyway, so these four things are my opinion. Now, clearly, I'm obviously always right. <laughs> okay, no, that... I don't understand, in the 60s, we had bumper stickers called Question Authority. Why don't we do that anymore? We're all, you know, a bunch of wusses that are, you know, not... You know, well, that's not true because of this. Well, so you need to be doubting Thomases or whatever. So here are the four things, in my opinion, that help decide how much you kick back or let through in terms of this environmental separation. The first is, where is the building located? There's a difference between Montreal and Miami, despite the fact that people from Montreal vacation in Miami, right? So the, exter the external environmental load is defined by the building location. How much rain? What's the temperature? Relative humidity? Uh, wind? Snow? Uh, risk from wildfire? Um, you know, the you know, the Carol King thing, the earth moves under my feet. She was like a singer. I mean, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> this group is going to be hard because you're all young and good looking and I hate all of you for that reason. But <laughs> so the location establishes the external environmental load. Um, and by the way, that's a, that's a big deal. Um, buildings used to look differently in different locations of the country based on the environmental load. Now they all look the same, which is insane because that can't possibly make any sense. I mean, but we try to make them look the same even though back in the day they were different because of the external environmental load. You know, if you were, somebody showed you a picture of a house from New England, you would know that it was from New England. If, um, if somebody showed you a picture of a house from, you know, Santa Fe, New Mexico, you would know it was from Santa Fe, and the same thing from Miami. Um, that's because the environmental, the location, and the available materials at the time dictated what that building would look like. All right, so of the four, in my opinion, the first is the external environmental load. That's determined by the location. The second is the internal environmental load, second of two. And there's a big difference between a warehouse and an indoor swimming pool connected to a data processing center, hospital, art, gallery, museum. That's a new combined thing that uh, I guess they're going to do in New York City, right? <laughs> All right, so there's a difference between a warehouse, a residential enclosure, 
a commercial space and a special use facility such as a humidified pressurized hospital or a humidified pressurized um, data processing center or an art gallery or museum. And the internal environmental load <coughs> can be as stressful, and in some cases more stressful, than the external environmental load. So, so far this is pretty straightforward of the, of the four. The first was the external environmental load, the second is the internal environmental load. And the third, and third gets interesting. What are the materials that comprise the environmental separation? Are we building out a thousand year old trees and rocks? Or are we building out a was wood? It was wood once, but it ain't wood no more. Engineered wood is an insult to both wood and engineers. OSB is the spam of wood, and spam is the OSB of luncheon meats, right? Um, youngsters don't appreciate it when I tell them that we used to go to these places called forests and cut trees down, put them into boards, and build things called boats out of them and put them in the water and sail them around the world. Uh, try doing that with a sheet of OSB, right? And then we used to have a wet applied interior finish called plaster, and now we have a dry applied interior finish called drywall. And drywall is really paper, right? We're lining the interiors of our buildings with paper. We're building paper buildings. Even the dumbest of the three little pigs didn't build his house out of paper. <laughs> right? Now, what are the odds that we're going to go back to build out of thousand-year-old trees and rocks and plaster? And the answer is not going to happen. But it means that we have to change the way that we use these materials because they're not the same as traditional materials. I mean, this, this should be obvious, but apparently, <coughs> apparently it's not. Now, it's easy to understand this in a new building. But we're going to focus on retrofits and rehabilitation. And oh gosh, that's complicated. It's anybody today, well, you know, anyway, it's easier to do a new building with a clean sheet of paper than to try to deal with an existing building. But so far, the three of the four are pretty obvious. So let me give you the first three again. Number one is the external environmental load. Number two is the internal environmental load. And number three are the materials that comprise the environmental separation. Number four is the one that folks don't appreciate, and they need to, and that is the energy exchange between the inside and the outside, and the outside and the inside. What has been happening to the exchange of energy across our buildings? It's okay, you're allowed to say, that you're not going to get thrown out, this isn't YouTube, we're not going to censor you. We're trying to control it. Well, it's not we're, trying to, we're not controlling it. What are we doing to it? We're actually dramatically decreasing. decreasing it. We're insanely energy efficient. Well, that's got to be great, right? Well, no. <laughs> There's no such thing as a free thermodynamic lunch. That's the politically correct way of saying you can't get your money for nothing and your chicks for free. The energy exchange has been reduced, and that's both a good thing and it's also a bad thing. The good thing is that, guess what, we're, we're saving energy, yay. The bad thing is, is that the ability of a wall to dry should it get wet is reduced because drying involves an exchange of energy. So there's an inverse link between efficiency and durability. The more energy efficient we make the building, the lower and lower the drying potential. If you build out a thousand year old trees and rocks with no insulation, who cares if your windows leaked? <laughs> the building would dry in both directions. And, you know, when it was wet, it was hard to hurt real wood and rocks. And you build out of metal studs, engineered wood, put an enormous amount of fluffy stuff in the building, skin it with paper on the inside, skin it with engineered stuff on the outside put in a lot of thermal resistance, and you install a water injection system called a window. There are only two windows in the world, windows that leak and windows that will leak. So what do we know about windows? They leak. Now, not, not all of them, only one in, one in ten. But the manufacturers don't label those for us. We don't know which one it is. 
so we have to assume that they're all going to leak because we don't know. Now, it gets worse. Windows are like people. As windows and people get old, we leak. You youngsters have no freaking idea what's coming. All right? And so that 10% becomes 30 to 50% in a 5 to 10 year period. Now, back in the day, we didn't care because if we had a little bit of incidental water leaking into an assembly that was made out of robust materials with a high energy exchange, it didn't matter. Repeated wetting followed by repeated drying. And if the dwell time for water was appropriate or matched to the durability of the material, nobody cared. Today's windows are actually <coughs> significantly better than the windows that we had 50 years ago. But 50 years ago, the leakage didn't matter very much because it leaked into something that could handle it. That's why we use the word incidental water. You know, so what? Now, incidental water is no longer incidental. And in the last 15 years, we've changed the way we install every window and door. Every window and door is now put in in a pan flashing. Never used to do that. We didn't have to. But now it's critical because that incidental water is no longer incidental. We have to kick it to the outside or the wall is going to not work. Everybody with me on, on that? Well, in a new building, that's easy to deal with. In an old building, you're going to improve the old building. What are we going to do? Well, let's insulate it. Yeah, whoa, because, you know, we have to save the planet, which, okay, I'm, you know, it's on the only planet we have. I, you know, I can see that argument. I'm, my argument is a little different. I'm, I'm an engineer, and engineers are born with a genetic defect. It's the efficiency gene. We can't help ourselves. We're going to make the damn thing efficient. That's because what, that's what we do. It's like, I, 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 you can't help it. Therapy over the years hasn't helped me with that. So we're going to insulate it. So what have we done to the exchange of energy on that old existing building? Dramatically reduce it. What are the odds that that window is leaking? Well, it's been leaking a long time. It's an old building. It's a crappy window. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to pull the window out. Whose head explodes? Well, the historic consultant's head explodes. Now, if it was me, and it's not me, I'd say, well, look, I'll put in a new window that looks just like the old window, but now it's ultra-efficient and durable, and I'm going to line the opening with an invisible flashing system, meaning it's there, but nobody will know. And the trouble is, is that less than a quarter of the time do I win that argument. I mean, Nobody's going to be able to tell the difference, and the only people that could are dead because they're not around anymore to tell it. Okay, that's a bad joke. Mm -hmm. So what usually happens is the compromise is I pull the existing window out, I line the opening, and then I reconstruct or rehabilitate the existing window and put it back. So I put it back, it, so it's, 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 in, it's, it's in its original condition more or less, but I put it into a high-tech opening that nobody knows is high-tech because it can't be seen. Right? Everybody understand what I've just talked about? All right. If This is my general philosophy. If we've done our job right on these old buildings, nobody will know that we were ever there. Let me repeat this. If we do it well, nobody will know that we were there except maybe the odd really, really geeky type person that says, whoa, that's... Uh, and then the stuff that is seen, we're going to say is we can make it reversible. In other words, in 20 years from now or 50 years from now, somebody says, well, that was dumb. We can, you know, take it away and throw it away. And, you know, the old stuff is back. I don't think that'll happen. But the point is, is we want to make our... We want to have an incredibly low footprint or profile or signature. And it would be nice to make things reversible. That's if the building is of value. There are many buildings that, you know, geez, it's a crappy warehouse. There's no historic significant to that. And so <coughs> it's okay to change the appearance of the building. I mean, if it's, if it's, if it's fugly, <laughs> that's okay. But if 
it is of historic significance, we probably don't want to change the appearance in a way that irritates people or that civilians would notice. Does that kind of make sense? All right, so number one of the four is the external environmental load. Number two is the internal environmental load. Number three is the materials that comprise the environmental separation. And number four is the energy exchange between the inside and the outside. That's it. That's, that's the 30,000 foot overview of environmental separation and building science. That's my bias. And that's the bias of many building scientists. So understand it's a bias. It's a way of looking at things that's different from other people's way of, of looking at things. It doesn't mean that the other people's way of looking at things is incorrect. It's just that it's different and you have to understand that things are biased. And this bias is difficult with existing buildings. It's relatively easy with new stuff. Is that kind of? All right, so that's, 